So this week has been very wet, very rainy. We've had lots of flooding on the farm, yet by some divine miracle, the tarpaulin on the roof has managed to keep it bone dry inside the tiny house. So we are both very pleased about that. But as good as it's been, we need to carry on working on the roof. So time to get the tarp down. So now we've got the tarp off, the next step is to fill in the small area at the top of the decking that we didn't get round to last time. So we've just finished cutting all of the remaining bits for the front side. And now I've got the slightly daunting task of scaling up onto the OSB roof and nailing them in. I've got the best view down here. <laughs> Just look like a pair of legs. <laughs> Sorry. This wet weather is really not great for trying to do roofing. It's another wet day today. We had to abort mission pretty abruptly last time we were with you because out of nowhere came a torrential downpour and we had to hide the camera. We were running around like headless chickens trying to get that massive tarp back on. To add on top of that, it was incredibly windy. We were holding onto ropes and the tarp was parachuting. We were nearly getting taken off the ground. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. I wish I could have got it on camera, to be honest, because, yeah, it was pretty laughable. But, yeah, we got there in the end, screwed it back down again. But it does mean that we can't really do roofing today. I think we're going to have to wait with the roofing until we can actually have a dry day because it's quite a process getting that big thing on and off. And to kind of take it off for just where we've got an hour or so of dry weather, it's just not worth it. If you're wondering what we're doing, we are digging this hole because we're going to be trying to relocate an unhealthy tree into this new position where it's hopefully going to have chance to flourish. So many beetles. Oh, they're not beetles. Is that a cockroach? No, I think it's a cricket. That's a rude awakening for you, mister. There's a bit of debate going on about how big and deep the hole needs to be because it's going to be an olive tree that we transplant and they don't have a massive root ball. Ricky's erring on the side of caution, <laughs> keeps making the hole a little bit bigger. Keep up the good work. So we've got quite a few olive trees that are growing underneath our cork trees and basically the soil up here is really really rubbish, doesn't really get enough water, maybe not today, <laughs> but generally it's just not a great growing space. Even weeds struggle to grow. We're excellent at growing weeds everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna relocate them, give them a boost of nutrients, and hopefully this time next year it will be full of olives because at the moment it's not got one single olive on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's had one the whole time we've been here. No, I don't think so. And just to add, apparently the best time of year to move olive trees is during the, the depth of winter when they're most dormant. However, these ones are pretty unhealthy anyway, so we feel like they're not growing any fruit, which is normally why you wait till winter. So now seems a good a time as any to move them. They can get nicely watered and hopefully revive them a little bit. Right, what are we doing? So, doesn't need to be massive, but we want to go about a generous foot either, well, all the way around the like trunk. Here? Generous, go back a little bit. Yeah? Somewhere in the middle, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> We've hit roots. Oh, I'm so warm now. I think we might need to get under it. Like, oh, that's solid. <laughs> <laughs> I 
is that the scientific test? Well, it's not going to go anywhere. If I can't kick it, like we're certainly not going to be able to manhandle it. Okay. I think we need to try and get under and get some leverage. Go on then, show me your leverage. Mm. Nothing. Bending the pole. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Oh, what? Fail. I can literally see 30 centimetres down. Okay. No roots. It's, it's like that... bark that's been wet. Okay. Ugh, look. Oh, no. Well, that was an interesting turn of events. Basically, it transpires that where we were cutting out around what we thought was going to be the root ball, all the soil's just fallen off. And it's actually just trunk. So it kind of looks like this tree has been strangely like buried at some point, which is no wonder why it's not thriving in its current position. So we've already dug down, what do you think? Two foot? Probably. Dug down two foot. And now we're effectively, well, we might dig down further and there's more trunk, I don't know. Or yeah, we're kind of back at square one again, I think. I think we basically need to start again and come out a foot away from the the tree trunk, the subterranean tree trunk, because if we go too close to the trunk, we're gonna chop off the roots and I've got no further explanation. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. And that's it for Reed. Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> oh, I just spat everywhere. <laughs> I know. I'm exhausted. So the tree is free. <laughs> Didn't go to plan because this is not your typical olive tree. It seems like they've chopped it off of a bigger tree, stuck the branch in the gr in the ground, and propagated it from there. Because from about here to here which is probably the better part of a metre. That was below the ground. The root ball should really only be about 30 centimetres, I think, on this size tree. But also there's two. There's the original root ball down at the bottom. Yeah. And then this one, where it was buried under and it started growing. We really wanted to do a nice tidy job, keep as much soil around the roots as possible. That's obviously not happened, but hopefully we can restore it to better health than before. Competing for world's strongest woman. <laughs> so, before sowing or planting, about 40 to 50 grams per meter square. Do you think that's about a meter square ish? Ish. Ish. Apply the fertilizer around the plants, slightly buried, and give a good watering. Right. So, not at the bottom. Get some more composter. Composter. Mmm. See. Okay. Oh my gosh, why am I having such a problem? tree and the good thing about it being so bottom heavy is that we shouldn't need to stake it so happy days looks good just need to move a few more now yeah try a dozen also just look at the size of this hole that we had to get the olive tree from it literally looks like a meteor or something has landed on the farm no misbehaving tonight miss Stelz. you're going straight in the pit <laughs>
Well, it feels a bit like Groundhog Day, but the tarp is coming down again because we have a cloudy, but hopefully dry day today. So I've got the painstaking task of having to go through and fix all of these OSB sheets down because when we did it last time, we were just trying to get them all covered and we kind of did the bare minimum, kind of tacking in the corners and on occasional rafters just to get everything in place. But we have to fit a lot of them, kind of one every six inches on the seams and one every eight inches on all the other rafters. So there is a lot of them to do. But first I need to get the chalk line. I need to snap down where the center of every rafter is so I can see on all the OSB sheets exactly where I need to put the fixings. So now we're all chalked up. Now it's time to get the fixings in. Now, last time we used nails. It turns out that the nails we use are not in fact suitable for using outdoors, even though we revised they were. Even under the tarpaulin, the heads have started to rust. Now I've nipped out yesterday because it was another rainy day and I was trying to get some galvanized or stainless steel nails. Couldn't seem to get any anywhere. So I've had to resort to screws. I can find some online, but we're gonna to have to wait another three or four days to get them delivered. And we've really had enough delays because of the weather. Thankfully, <laughs> we only tacked the other ones in, so it's not gonna to be too big a issue to rectify. to have a break from all the rain we've been having and actually to be able to get on and make some progress with the roof but as it stands now I'm a little bit surplus to requirements so I'm just going to leave Ricky to it for a bit. Well that didn't last long it's just started to rain. One thing that doesn't seem to mind the rain however are my peas. I grew these ones just to have them as pea shoots however because of their success I've also soaked some more peas and also some more monge too and I'm going to plant those now, although this rain is getting heavier and heavier, so I'm just going to go and plant these now and hope I don't get too wet in the process. I found soaking peas really, really helps with germination, but don't leave it too long because it smells a bit fermented. <laughs> just trying to clear out the old mulch out of this bed and I found this really really weird thing growing in here and after a quick google it's something called bird's nest fungus and it looks absolutely revolting not gonna lie I thought it was going to be something like um, I don't know toad spawn or something although I don't actually think they maybe lay eggs in uh, soil but yeah it's a fungus it's apparently not harmful however it's very useful if you have it in your compost area so I'm going to try and remove some of it from here and add it to the compost along with the old mulch come out finally for the first time in probably about a week and a half oh feels good I'm just gonna basically plant all of this bed up with these peas and monge too because we love the pea shoots and I'm gonna let some of them grow up and see if they'll actually produce the pea pods Well, we're just trying to figure out how we're going to do this next bit, which is getting a vapor barrier on top of the OSB decking. Well, 
when we unrolled it, the vapour barrier isn't the texture we were expecting. It's kind of like more brittle and a bit crunchier. So hopefully it won't cause too many problems in the application. Ooh. Well, that's a big disappointment. That tape that we have to join the vapor barrier and cover over the staples, useless. It's not sticking. I don't know if it's because it's starting to rain and the wood's wet and the vapor barriers, well, I say wet, moist. But it's not sticking right now, so I don't know. I really hope it works. It's meant to be the stuff we're using to seal the insulation joins as well. I thought five rolls of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just go all in. Yeah, maybe if it doesn't work, everybody's Christmas presents will be wrapped in silver <laughs> tape.